Hello, everybody, and welcome back to part 10 of Steambot Chronicles. This is no good at all. How can I run a bus business when all the drivers are afraid to leave town? Oh, hey, would you be interested in transporting people beyond the city walls? It's kind of a spare time thing, okay? Is that good with you? Equip a carriage when you want to transport folks. Here's a permit. Just keep that with you, and you'll be fine. Aw, oh, yeah. I always wanted to be a bus driver. <laughs> and how easy. I didn't need a resume or nothing. I just talked to the guy and boom, now I got a job. Awesome, awesome. But yeah, there's bandits everywhere. They attack tropmobiles that go through the country and uh, the bus drivers are scared. They need someone brave to transport people to fight off the bandits. And well, I just happen to be a badass, so I might as well do it myself. I've stopped at this pit stop, this repair shop, uh, to buy a carriage because I'm going to equip it now. And the good thing about these repair stops is that they also function as hotels or resting places. So you don't need to stop in a town in order for time to pass, you know? I can actually sleep right here, right now. And the reason I'm sleeping until noon is because there's no one at the bus stop yet. But now there is. And it's Pablo, the artist who I bought paintings from in the church earlier in this playthrough. I want to see the Sabia Desert with my own eyes. Could you drop me off at Fort Raven? Well, hey, man, we're going to the Sabia Desert, too. It's on the way, so we might as well pick up Pablo and transport him. And yeah, he's going to be riding in the back the entire time, even when we get into fights with other tropmobiles, when we get into fights with bandits and stuff. And uh, this guy, he's probably going to have a bumpy ride. It's going to be a very bumpy ride for Pablo, but uh, he'll just have to deal with it, okay? Who said that? Help me. What? Wait, did you notice that? Did you notice on the wheel? On the spinny thing? Help me. That's right. Innocent civilians are being captured by the bandits, tied to this rotating spike wheel. <laughs> and I assume they're vomiting everywhere because I would absolutely throw up if I was tied to that thing for hours and hours and hours. You feel like the blood would rush to your head and that would be it for you. I don't know, but, uh... But I just destroy those things and there's always a treasure chest nearby and... They don't really have any ranged weapons, no cannonballs or anything to look out for. So, you know, you just attack them from a distance, make sure not to get hit by the spinny part. And you should be good. Now we're at this abandoned building. And I'm hungry again. God damn it, vanilla. Why are you always hungry? Why? Luckily, I still have a donut or two. Ugh, how long do I need to keep running like this? My wife's probably worried sick. Hey, hey you, did you come from Nefroburg? Yeah, I was just there. Ah, my name is Vladimir, and I run the real estate shop in Nefroburg. I witnessed something by accident, and now I'm being pursued. I didn't want my wife to be in danger, so I didn't tell her before I left town. What am I going to do? Uh, go on. You want to hear more? Have you ever seen a Trotmobile armed with a long-range cannon? Uh, yeah, at the beginning of the game. It shot at a boulder. It was on the beach, do you remember? Someone tried to attack us at the very beginning. I don't wish to get you into trouble, but, uh, if you run into the man in black while in Nefroburg, could you get him to leave? It is the only way for me to return safely. Sure, why not? I want to find out who shot at me too, so we might as well, eh? Really? Thanks so much. Let me know if you can get him to leave town somehow. Please tell me right away. Sure thing, Vladimir, but we're going to handle that much, much later in the playthrough, because I'm not returning to Neferberg uh, for anything. You know, I'm just going to keep moving forward. I'm going to be a Trapmobile champ just like Schneider when I grow up. Schneider doesn't talk much, but that's because he's so strong. Okay, kid, okay. I'm taking care of flowers on the patio. I'm taking good care of my flowers, so I'm sure they'll bloom. I'll show them to you after they bloom. Okay. Books are great. I wish I had more to read. I want to keep learning. Could you be... Are you the owner of this house? Ah, uh, no. Oh, thank goodness. That's a relief. I've been living in this abandoned house with some orphaned children. I don't have any money, though. I wish I could provide better for these children. This is hard to ask a complete stranger, but... We need all the help we can get. If you could donate something, anything at all to these children, it would be appreciated. 
So yeah, uh, this orphanage, every one of the children can move on to a much better life. Uh, but I have to solve their problems first, you know? I have to solve the one kid who wants to be a Trotmobile champion. I want to help the kid who wants to get some books and learn good. Because <laughs> learn good's not a phrase that people say. That's not a proper vocabulary. <laughs> but, uh, you know. I actually can't handle all of these kids' side quests until much later in the game because I have to meet all these different people who are from far reaches of the country before I can come back and actually help them with their problems. Uh, and here's another problem. The flowers are growing, but they seem dehydrated from lack of water. They're clearly dead. Oh, oh. I mean, I know she's a little girl, but she should probably know that her flowers are dead just by looking at them. Christ. They look like they got sucked up by friggin' one of the reactors from Final Fantasy VII or something. Oh. So, uh, we gotta break the bad news, kid. Uh, sorry, your flowers are not fine. They're not gonna bloom. <laughs> Gotta be honest. What? The flowers died? No, I've been taking good care of them and everything. You need to water them more. Oh, well, there's not much water here, so I've been giving them my drinking water. Guess it wasn't enough. There aren't any more seeds either. Hmm. Maybe later we'll get some seeds so we can help this girl make more flowers, huh? huh? I wonder, I wonder. But... Just wanted to check it out now. We're going to um, come back to this orphanage and help all these people with their problems much, much, much later in the playthrough. So, uh, just something to keep note of for now. Till then, we got a whole bunch of dervish machines still spinning a whole bunch of innocent people on their wheels. And I got my ball and chain and my cannonballs, so I got lots of range to my Trotmobile right now. I don't have to get anywhere close to it. Because if I had just, like, swords or clubs or something, if I had only melee weapons, I would have to, like, dash in, whack whack, dash out before the spinny part gets to me, you know? Ugh. But luckily, I got a big chain ball, so I can just, like, whoop, whoop, whoop from a distance, and it's hunky-dory, hunky-dory, but, uh, you know. If you're a melee user, it's a little harsh getting in there and taking your shots and trying to dash up before you get whacked with that thing. Otherwise, they're pretty, you know, pretty safe and harmless for the most part. I mean, if you want to ignore the people who are being spun around, you can just drive right by past them. They're not going to shoot at us or anything. We're not going to get in any kind of danger. It's just, you know, if we actually bother to take them out, we get treasure chests full of honey and yogurt and all kinds of stuff that will sustain us that will feed our hunger i love honey you know what i had the other day honey garlic sausages oh honey garlic sausages are the best sausages oh they're so good i'm gonna die much earlier than i'd like to but damn they're good <laughs> anyway here we are at fort raven ah oh, come on you're all too weak isn't there anyone worth fighting hey you here to fight me? Uh, why not? That's right. Let's get this over with. Oh, -ho! you've got a pair. But big talk won't help you none. Okay, so this is Dudley. And Dudley, like the boss elephant, also has a ball and chain weapon. Which means that uh, we gotta keep a little bit of a distance, we gotta dash to the side of him. In fact, I could dash to the side of him the whole fight, just pelting him with cannonballs and ball and chain strikes, and uh, he can't do anything because I just keep strafing and shooting, strafing and shooting, strafing and shooting, and he's just too slow on the turns that he can't keep up with me. Strafe and shoot, strafe and shoot, just like Mega Man Legends 1. Aw oh, yeah, baby. <sighs> Dudley, you suck. That was lame. <laughs> Even the boss elephant put up more of a fight than that. That's what you get for taking me on in a big open field, I guess. But hey. I was able to take down Dudley. I... I'm Dudley. How could I lose? There's no way you'll get away with this. Are you alright? Mister, you're super strong. I didn't think anyone could beat Dudley. My name's Jimmy. Everyone calls me Wuss or Wussy. Or Jimmy the Big Fat Wuss. What's your name? 
I'm vanilla. Vanilla? I'm like, the vanilla? Didn't you beat the killer elephants? Man, no wonder you beat him. Jimmy. Are you all right? Uh, thanks for worrying about me. But you don't need to. I'm, I'm used to being picked on. I'm supposed to be a gladiator. Believe it or not, well, ex-gladiator. After years of hard work, I got a D-rank license from the Nefroburg Arena. But I just couldn't handle it. I ran away. Oh, I'm talking too much. Sorry. Why do I always do this? I'll be around here, so if you have any questions, just ask, okay? <laughs> Thanks again for, for today. Damn, Jimmy. Cheer up. Cheer up. The bus stop is right here, so I'm going to drop off Pablo. Desert, here I come! I'll draw so many pictures. I keep giving him a new accent because I don't know what to do with that character. <laughs> Anna wants us to deliver her to the Honeybee Gardens, but that's actually in the opposite direction of where I'm going. So I'm just going to say no to her for now. Uh, a lot of the bus stop people don't have any like specific quests or anything. They're just a way to get you extra cash, but uh, you know. There's a lot of people who need transport, and a lot of people. Oh, uh, you're strong. Nothing like me. Oh, right, you had amnesia. Ask me anything. I'll at least try to answer. Uh, Fort Raven. Fort Raven is known as the entrance to the Fen Ruins. I guess it's some tomb or something for an ancient king guy? A lot of grave robbers go in now looking for treasure. Most of the treasure's probably gone, but there must be something inside to keep them coming back. I wonder what the treasure is. I don't know, but I like the sound of treasure. I want to find out myself. The bazaar was established to supply desert, desert travelers and explorers. It's pretty fun just to walk around and look at the cool stuff. There's even, like, a water trader. They pay money for water. I never had to pay for water when I lived in Neferberg. But it's scarce here, so I guess that makes sense. I'm pretty broke, too. Maybe I should consider selling water or something. <laughs> I guess so, buddy. That guy, he got pretty angry when I tried talking to him from my Tropmobile. I don't know why he's so upset. He seemed really nice once I was on foot. Hmm, maybe I'll try talking to him on foot. But yeah, Fort Raven is a big bazaar. There's lots, and I mean lots of shops here to buy all kinds of like food and clothing and items for real estate and whatnot. So it, it's quite the market, it's quite the market. And there's a lot of NPCs here. And if you're trying to complete your gla your glossary, your gallery, you gotta talk to all of them. And it's just like, holy moly. You got lucky, that's all. My trap mobile's due for repairs. You okay, Dud Dudley? Hey, you there! Hmm? That was some match back there. I've never met a rider like you. Not to brag, but I even have a rank C license. Phew! Lady Luck hasn't walked out on me yet. Would you mind escorting my humble little caravan here? I can't reach Alcazar de Condor without crossing this desert. There's thieves out there, you know. We'll never make it without your help. Once we get there, I'm willing to pay you for each truckmobile you protect. And I'll even pay for gas. So what do you say, huh? Leave it to me. This'll be a cakewalk. Oh, so confident. You have our eternal thanks, kind sir. Yo! Get it started! The name's Delson. I'm the president of Deloche Emporium. I just founded it recently, so I need this venture to succeed. There's a little time before we leave, so stock up at the bazaar if you want. You can't get out without this logo on your truck, so don't lose it. I'll wait here in my trotmobile. Let me know when you're ready. It's so refreshing to be able to play a cocky asshole. <laughs> And I admit that I, the Great Clement, my name is the Great Clement, I call myself the Great Clement. I'm a cocky asshole, alright? I like to brag when I'm good at something. I'm sorry, that's just the way I am. And I like that Vanilla can reflect my own personality and just be like, you know, I got a C-rank license, you know, I'm pretty friggin' good. I think I can handle this, don't worry, I'm pretty badass. So, <laughs> it's, uh, it's enjoyable making Vanilla like this. I mean, we're halfway into dickbag territory, and don't worry, I will show you dickbag Vanilla later. But, uh, we're getting there, we're getting there. It's, it's just nice to give him a little extra personality other than bland. Well, the Vanilla, like his namesake, and, uh, ooh, belly dancers, ooh. If 
by the way, I love the music track here at Fort Raven. It is so good. I remember I was just listening to this song over and over and over again when I first played the game. It's just like, ah. This game's got a great soundtrack, you know? There's a lot of music for so many different situations, and Fort Raven, one of my favorites. One of my absolute favorite pieces of music from the game, so yeah. Selling cheese here in the desert. Luckily, it hasn't rotted or anything. That's good, that's good. The cheese is very expensive, but it sustains your hunger very nicely. I think it, like, goes three levels of hunger. So, like, if you're hungry, you only need to eat, like, one block of cheese, and then you're, like, satisfied. Anyway, this guy's talking about a bicycle. It's a mechanical vehicle that doesn't require coal or gasoline to run. I wanted to find the man who invented this bicycle, but unfortunately, I can't. Where could he be? Mm hmm. But first, I want to stop at the clothing merchant so I can update my my wardrobe a little bit. There's desert garb for a male, desert garb for a female, turban, and swimming trunks for the people who really want to show all their skin. Oh, we're gonna see we're gonna see lots of skin from Vanilla very soon. But boop, for now, we're gonna put on the desert clothes, and I'm actually giving Connie the female version of the desert clothes since I cannot wear it myself. I know, I know. You can't cross-dress in Steambot Chronicles, unfortunately, but uh, I can give it to Connie as a gift, and then maybe when we're in the desert, she might put it on? Uh, uh, who knows? Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. But uh, I'm dressing for the occasion. We're going to the desert. You gotta look the part, right? But we just talked to a guy who talked about someone who invented the bicycle. Supposedly he's here, right? He is here, and he's over right next to the border wall. We gotta talk to him off the Trotmobile, because he, he despises Trotmobiles, and talking to him on foot is the only way we can get any kind of conversation out of him. It's been a while since I've had any visitors. You're not from around here, are you? I used to be a mechanic. I loved vehicles as a kid. But when people started using Trotmobiles for crime, my attitude started to change. I wanted a vehicle which couldn't be used for evil, so I created what I call the bicycle. It's slower than an automobile, but it also doesn't use fuel. Best of all, you can't attack people with it. Now, don't you think it's the ideal vehicle? It's pretty good, but uh, any vehicle could be used for evil, my friend. That's true in theory, but Trotmobiles give the rider a sense of invincibility which contributes to the rise in crime. We don't need people abusing that kind of power. That's why I believe Trotmobiles should be abandoned entirely. Since you're not convinced, I'll lend you my bicycle. It should prove useful along your journey. Once you're all done, bring my bicycle back. I'd like to hear your thoughts after you use it for a while. I wish you good fortune. This is something a lot of players might miss out on, might completely skip out on, and they should not because it's one of the best things in terms of traversing through towns, traversing through the environment. Oh my god, I love the bicycle. Because, <laughs> like, again, when you're in a town, if you want to get around the town fast, you have to hop into your Trotmobile, but the thing is, the Trotmobile has to obey the traffic laws. It stays to the road, it stops at the stoplight, and you have to wait for, like, other cars to get out of the way of you. You know, sometimes you have to wait for a car to pull into a parking space or whatever. So, it's very slow because it obeys all these rules. But a bicycle, no, no, you can drive on the road, you can drive on the sidewalk, you can drive on the lawn of anyone's front yard. It doesn't matter. You can drive wherever you want when you have a bicycle. And it's much faster than a Trotmobile, so I'm going to be using it to travel all over the various cities that we're going to visit in this game. So, can't miss out on that. Very important. And it's also worth mentioning that the color scheme of the bicycle is tied to the color scheme of your Trotmobile. That's why my bike was red, because my Trotmobile is red. So, you know, that just makes sense. This is the entrance to the Fen Ruins, and this is a place that is totally optional. I don't need to go in there at all to complete the story. But, while I'm here, I might as well, because not only are there a whole bunch of bandits inside spelunking for treasures, but I mean, there's treasures. And I gotta get those treasures myself. I wanna see what's inside the Fen Ruins. I wanna see what kind of awesome stuff I can find. So, come back, ladies and gentlemen, for part 11 because we're going to be exploring the ruins. Till then.